psoriasis is exacerbated by lithium, beta blockers, antimalarials, or all of the above? The answer is all of the above. So psoriasis has certain factors that worsen it or exacerbate it. Okay. One, uh, most commonly, it worsens in the winter. Okay. So dry, cold weather. Stress, any form of stress or injury will worsen psoriasis. So that includes surgical stress as well. Beta hemolytic streptococcal infection classically uh, tends to uh, cause or tends to exacerbate gutted psoriasis. And this occurs usually in children or young adults. This is important. Drugs, uh, including all the above and corticosteroids as well will exacerbate psoriasis. So you must remember that systemic corticosteroids are never given for psoriasis except in one condition. I'll talk about that later. Smoking and alcohol also are known to worsen psoriasis. The important feature of psoriasis is crusting, scaling, oozing or erythema. So psoriasis classically is erythematous scaly plaques. The scales are thick silvery white scales. This is the classic feature of psoriasis. The crusting is basically when there's a mixture of um, blood and serum that is called a crust. So a crust is seen in an eczema because it is scratched or excoriated. Okay. Oozing again can be seen in uh, eczemas and insect bites or in a blistering condition, a bullish disorder like pemphigus. It's classically not seen in psoriasis. Erythema is seen in most psoriatic lesions, but it is not the most important feature. Important feature is the thick, scaly, silvery white uh, scales. So the clinical features of psoriasis, this affects the skin the nails, the scalp, and the joints as well. On the skin, you see erythematous scaly plaques. So you have annular, thick scaly plaques. Okay, The silvery scales are very important to remember. These are classically seen on the extensor aspects. You uh, can see it on the scalp as well, usually. And uh, Kebner phenomenon is positive in psoriasis usually. Auspitz sign is a clinical uh, sign which is demonstrated in uh, plaque of classical uh, psoriasis vulgaris. So when we scrape a psoriatic plaque with a glass slide, the first thing you remove will be the loosely adherent thick waxy silver scales. The next uh, layer is a red moist membrane known as the bulkless membrane. And when you scrape that, that is the dermoepidermal junction, you will reveal pinpoint bleeding. That is because of the dilated capillaries in the dermis. So this is auspice sign seen in psoriasis. Nail changes in psoriasis are many. So I've just shown you uh, a diagram of all the various nail changes you can see. Most common and classical will be pitting. Okay, that is thimble pitting of psoriasis. So usually that's a uniform pitting. Okay. Onycholysis, which means the separation of the distal nail plate from the nail bed. Uh, splinter hemorrhages, which are seen as linear red streaks through the nail plate. And salmon patch, which is another uh, typical psoriatic lesion. It's a pinkish colored oval patch on the nail. Other features are uh, subungual hyperkeratosis, leukonychia, which is whitening of the nail plate, and tracheonychia, which is just destruction of all the nails. Joints are also affected. Usually these are the small joints and they can cause permanent deformities. So the types of psoriasis, the classic chronic plaque psoriasis is usually seen on extensor aspects. So on the elbows, the knees and the scalp as well. Gutted psoriasis, gutted means raindrop pattern. So this is usually seen in children or young adults. Flexural psoriasis is inverse psoriasis. So this is seen in um, the flexors, that's the groin uh, or the underarms, the arm folds. This is not so common. Scalp psoriasis, palmoplantar psoriasis can occur and sometimes this can be pustular. So you can have palmoplantar pustulosis. Nail psoriasis and a typical form is erythrodermic psoriasis. This means 90% uh, or more of the body surface is covered with psoriasis. Pustular psoriasis is another separate entity. 
So how do we clinically evaluate psoriasis? We we use a score called the PASI score or the Psoriasis Area and Severity Index score. This is usually done so that we can monitor improvement with treatment. Okay? So the PASI score has several um, factors involved. You just need to know basically one is the percentage of body surface area involved. The second factor is erythema of the plaques of the lesions. The third is scaling, how scaly are the lesions. And the fourth is the thickness or induration of the plaques. Now, histopathology of psoriasis. There are several classical features. This is a low power view, okay, low power magnification of a psoriatic plaque. So you can see here on top, there is a, a deeper purple part in the uh, keratinized layer. So that is a subcorneal pustules. Okay, those are collection of neutrophils okay, in the corneum, stratum corneum. You can see these long elongated reti ridges, classic elongated reti ridges. This is classic of psoriasis. Okay? And in the supra papillary uh, areas here, you can see the dilated capillaries, some dilated capillaries. You can see a lymphocytic infiltrate in the dermis, which will be perivascular usually. So this is a higher power view. You can see the collection of neutrophils okay, in the stratum corneum in the keratinized layer and down here as well you can see a collection of neutrophils which is like a pustule basically the epidermis. So in psoriasis you'll have regular acanthosis that means thickening of the epidermis. You'll have those classical elongated reti ridges that means the part of the epidermis which drops down into the dermis like elongated okay, ridges and the other part the dermal papilla which projects upward between these reti ridges. Uh, this part above the dermal papilla is the suprapapilla part. So that is thinned out. Okay. There's parakeratosis. That means the presence of nuclei up to the stratum corneum, which is not a normal feature. So because of the multiplication, uh, the rapid multiplication of uh, cells in the epidermis, the nucleus, which is present in the basal layer, can still be found up until the stratum corneum in psoriasis, which is not normally there. You'll find uh, collections of neutrophils in the stratum corneum like pustules. So these are known as Munro's microabscesses. And uh, a similar collection of neutrophils but in the stratum spinosum is called spongiform pustules of Kogoch. There is prominent capillaries seen in the dermal papillae. So you may see some cross section of blood vessels there, okay? dilated. Some comorbidities that are associated with psoriasis are the inflammatory arthropathy, okay, spondyloarthropathy. There's inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's and um, ulcerative colitis, metabolic syndrome, so diabetes and hypertension and cardiovascular disease is commonly associated with psoriasis along with obesity as well and fatty liver or NASH. So the treatment of psoriasis, uh, we'll start with the topical treatments. In uh, plaque psoriasis, which may be limited, we use mainly topical uh, treatments. So the most common is corticosteroids. So clobetasol propionate would be the most common. Salicylic acid ointment is also commonly used to thin out the hyperkeratinization. We often combine the corticosteroid with the salicylic acid ointment. A vitamin A analog, uh, called tarzarotene is used topically sometimes for skin lesions and also for nail lesions. Okay? Vitamin D analog is called calcipotriol or calcipotriene. These can be used for limited plaques as well. Coal tar, calcineurin inhibitors like tacrolimus, dithranol and most important of course are emollients. Okay? This is just moisturizers uh, and uh, things that contain urea as well. The second is phototherapy. So uh, narrow band UVB, that is NBUVB, which is 311 nanometers wavelength, is uh, typically used okay, for psoriasis. A broad band UVB may also be used and there's a type called PUVA, which is sorelin plus UVA therapy. Okay, it's also known as photochemotherapy because sorolin is a photosensitive uh, chemical which can be either applied onto the plaques, it can be consumed orally uh, or you can bathe in a solution of that 
two hours before you expose the patient, uh, the, um, expose yourself to UVA light. Okay, so that's photochemotherapy. Eczema laser is basically a laser which emits a wavelength of just 3, 308 or 311 nanometer. And this is also used for just limited uh, plaques of psoriasis. Sessions of phototherapy are usually done two to three times a week. Other sessions, uh, other conditions that improve with phototherapy are vitiligo, atopic dermatitis, some severe eczemas and uh, certain conditions which are light sensitive. So polymorphic light eruption can also be treated with phototherapy to sensitize the patient. Uh, cutaneous T-cell lymphomas sometimes are also treated with phototherapy. Now systemic medication, there are three main medication okay, which are specific for psoriasis. They are methotrexate, acetretin and cyclosporin. So methotrexate has an anti-inflammatory and an anti-proliferative action. It also works on psoriatic arthropathy. So that's an advantage when you give it, it treats both the skin lesions and the joints. Uh, you have to remember to give folic acid along with methotrexate. It's given as a once weekly dosage and it is contraindicated in pregnancy. Acetretin is a retinoid and this has a few indications. You can treat pustular psoriasis with it as well as psoriatic erythroderma that is extensive 90% uh, or more body surface area involvement. Uh, retinoids are category X, they are not allowed in pregnancies and acetretin specifically is not allowed up, up to a year prior to planning pregnancy as well because it is um, fat soluble and it stays in the body in the fat stores. Cyclosporin is uh, it affects the T cell activation uh, so it's an immunomodulator and this uh, specifically works very fast you can start seeing improvement within 72 hours so it's given in cases which are very extensive or where a patient may need immediate improvement you know urgent improvement so the treatment of choice for erythrodermic psoriasis is corticosteroids methotrexate cold tar topical or topical corticosteroids Corticosteroids, oral or corticosteroids are contraindicated in most cases of psoriasis. Okay, um, cold tar cannot usually be treated, uh, used to treat erythrodermic psoriasis. It it is also an irritant in some cases. So when you have more than ninety percent body area involvement, uh, cold tar exposing uh, compromised skin to cold tar may actually uh, worsen the condition. And topical corticosteroids, again, would not be so effective in erythrodermic psoriasis because in this case, uh, such extensive body involvement would also lead to problems like um, uh, problems involving homeostasis of the body in general. So methotrexate is the best answer. The most common association with co-spitting of nails and onycholysis is, okay, so pitting of nails, again, and onycholysis are seen in psoriasis, right? So we are looking for lesions of psoriasis. Violaceous plaques, that's in lichen planus. Well-defined scaly plaques, that suggests psoriasis. Scarring alopecia, that is more in lichen planus. Psoriasis does not cause alopecia. Polygonal papules, again, indicates lichen planus. So the answer, well-defined scaly plaques. This is psoriasis. Ospitz sign, this we know now is, so this is seen in classic plaque psoriasis. In pustular psoriasis, you don't have plaques. Uh, it's not seen in lichen planus. And inverse psoriasis again, which is in the folds or the flexures, typically does not have scaling because of the moist nature of the skin in the flexures. So you would see this only in plaque psoriasis. The drug of choice for a pregnant woman in second trimester with pustular psoriasis is prednisolone. Dapsone, acetretin, methotrexate. So here we have three drugs which are contraindicated in pregnant women. Okay, they are dapsone, acetretin, which is retinoid, category X, and methotrexate, category X. So that leaves prednisolone. This is the only indication in psoriasis where you give a corticosteroid, that is pustular psoriasis of pregnancy. It's also known as impetigo herpetiformis. Okay? It's a name which can confuse because it is neither impetigo and uh, it is neither herpes. So if this is just a misnomer. You just need to remember impetigo herpetiformis is another name for generalized pustular psoriasis in pregnancy. 
Pseudo-isomorphic phenomenon is seen in psoriasis, lichen planus, vitiligo or plain warts. So we know what isomorphic phenomenon is, that is Kebner phenomenon, that's seen in psoriasis, lichen planus and vitiligo. Pseudo-isomorphic phenomenon is, um, is seen in warts, okay, that is where it's basically where inoculation uh, of that lesion into uh, in a linear fashion that's by physical uh, spread or by trauma okay so since warts are infectious from one wart if there's a scratch then there's a good chance that the wart will also uh, get transferred onto the the scratched skin so that is called a pseudo isomorphic phenomenon because it mimics Kebner phenomenon but it's not real the only definitive indication of systemic steroids and psoriasis so you should know this by now is it pustular psoriasis? Is it impetigo herpetiformis? Psoriatic arthropathy or erythroderma? Impetigo herpetiformis or general, generalized pustular psoriasis of pregnancy. Calcipotriene is a vitamin A, B, D, or E analog. As I've told you before, it's a vitamin D analog. Okay? It's used topically in psoriasis.